Good morning. Welcome to Marine Baptist Church Sunday service. Our word for today is image. Let's begin our service today by standing and singing hymn number 82, Victory in Jesus. I heard an old, old story how a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, Come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. About the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea, about the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Let's remain standing for a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you for your protection and for all that you do to stop the evil. We understand that we need to learn how you work in order to maximize the influence that we are to have in your kingdom for you. We pray that you will pour out your Holy Spirit on us and that you will stir up your Holy Spirit in us to accomplish what you want us to accomplish for you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. And let's sing hymn number 108, Rock of Ages. <laughs> Not you. Not you. You. Rock of ages, come for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed 
Be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Could my tears forever flow? Could my zeal no longer know? These for sin could not atone. Thou must save and thou alone. In my hand no price I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. While I draw this final breath, when my eyes shall close in death, when I rise to worlds unknown, and behold thee on thy throne, rock of ages, clap for me, let me hide myself in thee. Amen. This time I'm going to ask Pam to come and bring a reading from Billy Graham. Today's reading is called A Solid Foundation, and the Bible verses Luke 6, 47 through 48. Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them is like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on the rock. Jesus talked about two men who were building houses. One built his house on a solid rock foundation, and when the storms came, his house stood. The other man built his house on sand, and when the storms came, his house crumbled and fell. Many people today live in homes built on sand. Lacking the right foundation, their family is in trouble. What about you? When the floods of sorrow, the waves of temptation, and the gates of adversity come, will your home stand? Make Jesus Christ the foundation of your home and your life. I believe that no home can stand unless the family in that home has a strong faith in Jesus. There needs to be a family prayer and Bible reading and active involvement in a church where Christ is taught and followed. God's pattern for a strong Christ-centered home is best fulfilled by a godly father and mother. But even if this isn't possible because of death or divorce, Christ can still help you build your home on his will. On what are you building the foundation of your home? The rock of Christ's teaching or the sand of self-will? At this time, I'm going to ask Brenda to come and sing a special, Revive Us Again. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Alleluia, thine the glory, alleluia, amen. Alleluia, thine the glory, revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy light, who has shown us our Savior and banished our night. Alleluia, thine the glory. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has taken our sins and he's cleansed every stain. Alleluia, thine the glory. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, thine the glory. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each throw be rekindled with fire from above. Alleluia, thine the glory. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, thine the glory. Revive us again. Our starting point Bible verse for today, Genesis 1, 26. 
And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Let's pray. Dear God, I pray that you will give us a proper understanding of religion and relationship. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Elkanah had two wives. Peninnah had children, but Hannah didn't. Peninnah was uppity with Hannah. Elkanah went to Shiloh to worship God every year. Eli and his two sons were the priests in Shiloh. Elkanah was kind to Hannah, and he gave her everything she needed. But Peninnah, why do you let her get to you? Am I not better to you than ten sons? 1 Samuel 1.10, and she, Hannah, was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. If God would only give her a son, Hannah would give her son to the Lord. Eli saw her praying and thought she was drunk, but she explained what was going on. She was praying silently and moving her lips. Eli blessed her prayer, and she had a son. When he was old enough, she brought him, her son, back to serve God. 1 Samuel 2.11, and Elkanah went to Ramah, Ramah to his house, and the child did minister unto the Lord before Eli the priest. He stayed behind in Shiloh. They came every year from Ramah to Shiloh to worship God, and Hannah would make her son Samuel a coat. But Eli's family did not present as sweet an image to the community or to God. They refused to obey God's word. They took shares from God's sacrifice that did not belong to them. Eli asked, do you think you can steal from God? Then one night, God spoke to Samuel. Samuel. Samuel heard his name and ran to Eli. Did you call me? No, Eli said. Lie down again. It happened again. Samuel, Samuel ran to Eli again. Did you call me? No, lie down again. It happened a third time. Samuel, this time Eli figured it out. If he calls again, say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. It happened a fourth time. And when God called Samuel, 
Little Samuel said, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And God told him, I am going to judge Eli's house forever. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. And that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever for the iniquity which he knoweth because his sons made themselves vile, and he restrained them not. And therefore I have sworn unto the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be purged with sacrifice nor offering forever. God had actually sent a man to tell Eli that he didn't like what was going on in wanted him to fix it. The next morning, Samuel opened the doors of the temple, but he didn't want to tell Eli what God had told him. Eli told him, you must tell me everything. God will do it to you if you don't. And sure enough, do you remember the Philistines? You remember Samson? He fought the Philistines. David killed Goliath, who was a Philistine, right about this time in history. The battle was raging, but the children of Israel were losing to the Philistines, so they called for God. Get the ark! They took it for granted that God would be there for them if they brought the ark. They let out a shout when the ark came into the camp. First Samuel 4, 5. And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout so that the earth rang again. But Israel was beaten. Hopni and Phinehas, Eli's two sons, were killed. The ark of God was taken. When Eli heard that the ark had been taken, he fell from the seat where he was sitting and died broke his neck. And that was the end of Eli and his two sons, Hopni and Phinehas. In 1 Corinthians 10, 6, we see this picture a lot. In the New Testament, the Apostle Paul explains, the Old Testament was given, was written to give us examples of evil, warning us not to lust after evil. 1 Corinthians 10, 6, Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. This is my understanding of that episode in the Bible what we're supposed to get. God is not a thing. God is a being. Do you remember our starting point Bible verse? God made us in their image. And here I have the words in our starting point Bible verse that talk about God as them. 
let us make man in, in our image after our likeness. And we understand that they are God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. That we're made in their image makes me wonder, did we get our emotions from God? In other words, does his image that he made us in include his emotions? A lot has been written on this. Here you see a screenshot from an article that I found on gotquestions.org that lists seven of God's emotions. Anger, compassion, grief, love, hate, jealousy, joy, and there are more. If that is true, then I have to conclude that God's people who he loves can hurt God's feelings. That would explain why God rejects thing, idols, images, worship. Do you remember Moses and the brass serpent? It was a good thing. God gave Moses the brass serpent so that the people could be healed. But in 2 Kings 18.4, we find that he, King Hezekiah, removed the high places and broke the images and cut down the groves and, and I have this underline, broke in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. For unto those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it, and he called it Nehushtan. He broke it in pieces because the people were worshiping it, an image. You remember Gideon? Gideon, he put out the fleece, and if it was wet, he would know one thing, and if it was the other side was wet, he'd know another. It was, it was a, uh, a, a, like a lot, and it, it was how God spoke to him, good thing. And Gideon, the sword of the Lord, and Gideon, and Gideon and the 300 man army. After Gideon did so well, they collected gold for Gideon, and he made an ephod to honor God. The ephod would remind them what God had done to direct Gideon in the way. And the ephod was like a, a garment that the priest wore, and it would, if, if you pulled out uh, a black stone, it would tell you no. If you pulled out a white stone, it would tell you yes, and, and that was all part of it. Okay, good thing. Goes back to um, Moses in the wilderness temple. And uh, okay, so as part of the Israelite religion. But they turned it into an idol. In the New Testament, Jesus told us Whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. He was criticizing these guys because they, he was talking to the religious leaders and it was all about um, image worship. The image of the idol, and there's, there's a lot of other images that are mentioned in Matthew 23, 18 through 28. And I, ju I just pulled off this 
the scripture to, to so you, you could see it. Yeah. I think this background gives us some insight into Jesus teaching in Matthew 23 where he talks about swearing on stuff. Jesus came to die as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, but they, these religious people, were more concerned with images. Jesus said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye paid tithe of mint and anise and cumin, those were spices, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, faith. These are ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. Jesus taught us the weightiest matter of the law is love God. Not stuff. Let's pray. Dear God, you deserve so much more from us. We are thankful that you bless the little bit that we bring and that you continue patiently with us, teaching and counseling us to be better. We pray that you will give us better hearts and that you will continue to teach us your will and your word while we decide how closely we want to follow you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you.